Welcome back, everyone, to the Hearthstone Grand Masters. Coming up next is a matchup that we didn't expect a lot. It is the Hunter, the Beast Hunter from Amnesiac, going up against the Mech Paladin from Strife Crow. I'm pretty sure when Strife Crow was submitting Paladin this week, he wasn't thinking, you know what, I'm going to take down some rogues and hunters, uh, which seems to be the problem, or sorry, mages and hunters, which seems to be a problematic matchup uh, for a multitude of reasons. But let's go ahead and just analyze it a little bit further. What's Strife Crow's mech deck gotta do to beat a deck like Hunter, TJ? Uh, well, Hunter doesn't have as many uh, comeback tools on the board and doesn't have as explosive of turns as, say, Mage has. Uh, so it's kind of just about snowballing an early board. Uh, Hunter does have a plethora of removal with things like Unleash the Hounds, Kill Command, uh, Deadly Shot. Uh, even like Vicious Scale Hide with Dire Frenzy can act as a way for you to stall out the game. So Strife Crow's kind of got to get on the board early and snowball a little bit while not uh, sacrificing too much in the ways of, play of playing around Deadly Shot. Um, so I honestly think this matchup is much better than the Mage, but because there's no comeback tools, at any point in this in this game or in this series, if Strife Crow falls behind on board, especially with Hunter, it's going to be really hard to come back. Um, and outside of Zilliax, there's not really any ways to heal as well. Uh, so Amnesiac, if he takes the board once, piles on some damage, and uh, is able to find some spells to close out the game, that's another way that he can win. So I feel like this this deck kind of lives on a knife's edge uh, for Shrive Crow, where it could be going well, all up until one swing turn comes out, and then he has no chance to win. That's just kind of the nature of it. Um, and I don't know if the deck is refined, I don't know if it's... Uh, it was a perfect bring, but I think this is going to be the most reasonable of tests, considering Hunter, uh, I think as you mentioned yesterday, is not polarized at all. It's got very close matchups across the board, and I think this is one of them. Well, um, I think that well, one of the things that I want to bring up is uh, yesterday I was browsing Twitter a little bit, and <clears throat> Viper, uh, the runner-up for the 2018, 2019 excuse me, World Championship, uh, stated that he feels like Hunter is actually one of the hardest decks in the current minute to play, the other being Zoo Warlock, but Zoo Warlock's not a very popular tournament deck. Therefore, by process of elimination, Hunter's the hardest tournament deck to play. And that, that was very interesting to me, because I thought Hunter traditionally has a, uh, a fairly straightforward game plan, but the more I thought about it, the more it makes sense, given that Hunter could pivot in any point of direction, and then they have a lot of choices on how they want to utilize things like Dire Frenzy. Yeah. Um, and they have the option to push fam uh, face damage aggressively, or they can play really passively and try to go for a comeback on the board with rush minions. Um, so, you know, now that I think about it, it makes a lot of sense. His his opinion, of course, this is all just subjective opinion. It's not factually correct, but I can totally see why Hunter could be a fairly complicated deck. Yeah. There's a lot of decision trees, and there's uh, also a, a big difference in what game plan you decide to choose? What game plan you decide to choose, and when you need to switch game plans? Because there's some decks where you can play completely normally and still have the option to switch game plans all the way until the last second. Um, whereas Hunter, as soon as you start to play aggressive, you're playing aggressively for the rest of the game. Right. As soon as you start to play defensively and passive, you're playing defensively and passive for the rest of the game. Um, and uh, Dire Frenzy, I feel like, is a big part of that. And what beast you Dire Frenzy is a big part of that. Because if you Dire Frenzy, and, let's say, a vicious scale hide or, or relatively early, you're on the defensive game plan. Your ability to be aggressive is not nearly as high as, let's say, you Dire Frenzy a, um, a Timberwolf or an Unleash the Hound or a Spring Pump. Dude, <laughs> this curve is so hard to stop. And Amnesiac doesn't have his one-up deadly shot. That it, it is, it might not even come to any of those things, TJ, that we're talking about. It might come down to Mech Paladin having an unstoppable hand. Which and, happens a lot. I mean, Christology Call to Adventure. Oh, snip snap. All right, first, we're going to Christology here. Because Christology might have a chance to pull a Bronze Gatekeeper. In which case, um, actually, he might even consider just playing a minion to make sure Deadly Shot doesn't become a possibility here. Yeah, uh, I mean, even though Amnesiac almost would have 100% Deadly Shot last turn on three, right? Um, he just drew three cards from his deck, so it's a little bit more likely, uh, especially with the Shimmer Fly, that he picks one up. Mm -hmm. So you might as well make yourself more resilient to it. I don't think Amnesiac's getting through a 411 the good old-fashioned way by trading in with minions. 
Yep. This is a, a point where um, Hunter's Mark being two mana is fairly relevant too. Animal Companion. So Amnesiac has a lot of possible combo plays, but he doesn't have a very good established play for this turn. He already has a Dire Frenzy. I don't think he needs a second one. It doesn't seem like to be like one of those matchups. Bait Arrow is very costly. I, I might think that Amnesiac is looking for a tracking in this position. Um, also, his opponent's help mech minion is at six health. If he wants to set it for Unleash the Beast, he needs to Spring Paw preemptively. But if he does so, reveals to Strife Code that he needs to magnetize immediately. Quickly. Oh, these are hard decisions across the board. I, I can totally see why Hunter is a fairly difficult deck because Zuljan is like the card you want to play in the late game. Yeah. But at the same time, Vicious Scale High Dire Frenzy is your way to stay in the game, and then Master's Call ties everything together. Uh, the Vicious Scale High and Master's Call kind of go together, whereas you can Vicious Scale High Dire Frenzy, sure, but then it's only like a four health gain, or, or eight in best case scenarios. And then you, the, the strength of it is that you can then Master's Call to draw the more of the Dire Frenzy Vicious Scale High. So it kind of feels weird to pick one or the other. And Zul'jin, like you said, just pr pretty much the strongest card in a nutshell mm -hmm. uh, in the deck. Maybe an argument for Master's <coughs> Call, uh, but... Um, yeah, I mean, now that he takes up Zul'jin, he'll cast a second Master's Call anyways. Uh, yeah. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, so Amnesiac has the ability to clear with the Unleashed Hounds, Timberwolf, mm -hmm. and Scavenging Hyena. Not clear, uh, to fight back on the board. Yeah. Hyena gets buffed three times, so it goes to a uh, an 8-5. That gets answered pretty easily by one buffed one drop from the Glowstone Technician. And you know that he has uh, two one uh, attack minions from it. <clears throat> I mean, if Amnesiac doesn't clear, there's just a lethal setup uh, on the other side. Skaterbot, Glowtron are both three additional damage onto the board. Plus True Silver Champion is, there's t that's 10 damage from hand, plus nine on board, that's 19. So it kind of has to go for at least somewhat of a clear here. Yeah, but with the Zul'jin, it gives him the ability to be defensive for a while, because, you know, he could, just hope that his opponent trades into this high, you know? Then play more Anna Companion and stuff like that, and then Zul'jin. That being said, this is a lot of damage Holy that can moly. come out. 10, 13 damage available just this turn. 16. Oh, 16, right, if you just use the other one drops instead. Yeah, 16 with, uh, uh not, not quite enough uh, mana for 16. Oh, so wonder. his most possible damage would be uh, Skaterbot, Glutron, True Silver Champion, which is 15. I mean, still a two-turn lethal setup. Still a two-turn lethal setup. And uh, outside of Animal Companion, there is no taunts in the deck. There's some life gain with Vicious Scale Hide. Shrefko knows that that's a possibility. We know that it's I not wonder. because Amnesiac <laughs> discarded his only Vicious Scale Hide with tracking. Skaterbot can just be used as a rush to take down. The hyena. TJ, how are you going to look me in the eye and tell me Glowstone Technician is not sick? Look at that! Can't deal with it! And even if he does, there's more mechs to magnetize and set up a lethal. Majak needs tracking into Deadly Shot. You can tracking again. Oh man, but if he trackings again, then he's he's discarded so many cards from I, his deck. I don't think that matters. He might be dead if he doesn't. Uh, doesn't find it. <sighs> I think he's dependent on a Misha now. Yeah, because just with this minion on board, it's lethal because of the oh damage from. Um, All right, Amnesiac dead. He tried. Tried to hang in there. Mech Paladin pressure too much. A turn six kill. And that that is how you do it. Wow. Look, I, I don't really have a, a horse in this race. I like Strifeco a lot. I like Amnesia. I like both of my friends. And um, I want success for both of them, but I also want to show off the power of Ghost of Technician. Now, also, to be fair, Galvanizer Curve was a lot to handle, too. Yeah. Um, but what really helped put the icing on top, right? Like, Because his momentum could have stopped like right there and right then. But uh, having the card draw was really important, so the Christology... Um, and then the Glowstone Technician to make everything buff to put within critical striking distance is a nice finisher. Um, and it just shows you how that package works really well together. Yeah.
Is the card still in standard that puts dragons in your hand? Dragon's Roar? No, the um, bronze something. Bronze Herald. The three mana. Oh, card that puts uh, dragons yes, in your hand. yes. That still came in out. standard. I I think that actually came out this expansion. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. I think it was the last one, wasn't it? Are you sure? Oh, you might be right. Oh, it is this right. one. I, I Why did I think that card's been around for so long? I remember playing with that card at what feels like ages ago. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe a similar style of card, though. But I think that card has a has some room to... With the Glowstone Technician? With the Glowstone Technician. Maybe. Maybe I'm thinking a little bit too fancy here, but... Uh, Look, its power with Crystallogy is a lot more obvious, it right? It just Especially needs with to X. buff two or three cards, and it's already high impact. If yep. it buffs a handful of cards, it's just game over. Well, compared to uh, Fungal Mancer, which was a it was still five mana, it was a 2-2 two -two that needed you to have a board in order to get 4-4. Four -four. Now, it's not one-to-one -one because it's buffing the board instead of your hand, but it's much more situational, and it has a lower stat line. So, I don't know. In that regard, it feels good, especially if you're Crystallizing early on, getting Skater Bots and then Glowstone Technician, because that's like a one mana 3-3 three -three uh, plus three, plus three buff that can also act as a one mana deal three damage uh, to a minion. So, I don't know. I think that I, there's so many things that I want to try with Goldstone Technician and Christology. I'm going to go home and try it, TJ. Kay. Because we're moving at a fast pace. Report back with your findings, Dan. TJ, it's, it's only been a couple hours and we're already in match number four, which looks like it might be going to match number five soon. I expect the last two matches to be a little slower, given that it's Mage versus Warrior, and those matches can go the distance. But um, the important takeaway here, going to game number two, is how does Amnesiac stop a momentum, stop the momentum from Paladin if they get started? Triforce doesn't have the Galvanizer. In fact, he had the option to play Crystology to try and find Galvanizer before he plays his first mech. And by choosing to play the Glow, the, uh, the Glowtron. He's trying to fight for the board early and then evaluate if he needs to Christology um, on turn two. Another Glowtron. Converting stored energy. It's just cool. I like the animation for Magnetic a lot. Yeah. It's one of those things where I don't mind to, I wouldn't mind it if it was even longer. Just to show like the very long transformation process like Voltron Voltron is still to this day the sickest animation in all of our stuff it, it is that twisting nether and like tree of life are like s tier now, I should make a tier list of Hearthstone animation new Deathwing is decent as well uh, Deathwing Death Dragon Lord yeah uh, no the Deathwing oh the new the newest version the newest it. version of it yes it's also sick I agree yeah but uh, there is something else about the Voltron animation. I think it's just because of the, the Power Rangers callback. It's just so sick. Well done. Is that the reason why the app was like 900 gigabytes for a long time, the Voltron animation? Just the Voltron <laughs> animation? <laughs> Took him two years to just... It takes like half my battery life yeah. just to transform Mimron Z once. Work. <laughs> Very worth Looks like Amnesiac's just going to go ahead and clear this with the Lynx. Uh, when it comes down to the resource trade, Amnesiac probably feels a lot better because he has Master's Call, but Strife Go has Prismatic Lens. Yeah. And part of the reason why uh, Strife Go can get away with this is because if he Prismatic Lens and gets a Kangors, then all the magnetic abilities that he's combining right here will be worth. And there's only a Timberwolf on board. I'm not that intimidated. I want to go for this lens. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, I mean, he gets the Kangors, and it's a little bit cheaper, but I think he was hoping for something a little more dramatic. Yeah, I talked about it yesterday, but one of the cool things about this deck is with Prismatic Lens, you have the full spectrum of cheap minions, yep. cheap spells, expensive minions, expensive spells. Yep. So you can do some crazy things. Uh, like if you had gotten Galvanizer with Kangors in this army, it would have cost... <sighs> I mean, okay, so the Endless Armor is just good to get. Obviously, I think if you're trying to be greedy, you want a bit, uh, a cheaper Endless Army with, like, another, like, low-impact mech. Yeah. But I also realized Strifecore drew most of them already, so he didn't really have that many cheap mechs to swap with. Yeah. But the fact that he has Kangors already means that this is a really good spot because now he can magnetize the front half I of the wonder. egg and then magnetize the back half of the egg. There's only three mechs that would have died by then. All three of them come back, and Hunter can't answer that in one turn. So then Amnesiac 
I think he recognizes this. He recognizes that Kangaroo's Endless Army was played. He has a small window of opportunity to set up something big. Does he go for, say, a Tundra Rhino in mm -hmm. this position? I think it's more... Uh, more efficient, I guess, with what deck you're playing to go wider on board, because that's where Sharp Crow struggles. He stri struggles to deal with multiple things at a time. It's really easy for him to deal with one big thing at a time, because he just magnetizes everything onto one mech, and then kills it. Um, whereas, if uh, Amnesiac were to pl go wide and play like Spring Paw, uh, like Spring Paws and Vicious Scale Hide, uh, then he has more options going into next turn, because Sharp Crow is likely to just magnetize on once on his mech. There is the uh, there is the argument that. Uh, there's not really anything that deals with the Tundra Rhino outside of two magnetizes or war gear. Um, but Drive Crow does just have war gear. Imagine if Missile Launcher actually didn't cost six right now. Seven. He'd actually have the perfect clear and trade. Yeah. This is looking very hard for the Hunter. I think Amnesiac's plan has to be hope that Stripe Crow never draws Zilliax and push as much damage as possible. Okay, so what's the maximum amount of damage that he can push? Well, this turn, it's just whatever's on board plus a kill command uh, and a hero power, but uh, which would be, what, 10? Uh, so again, I think it's kind of a situation where it's like wide on board. Hope that he sneaks some dam more damage through next turn and then finish the game out with kill commands. Wonder how explosive trap could play a, a role in this. Mm -hmm. Explosive trap from Amnesiac, if he doesn't play it this turn, makes it feel like why did you wait so long to play a secret when you know you want a freezing trap a minion when <laughs> Skeeter bots have been used. So I don't think uh, that's a viable plan here to bluff his opponent. I think he's just going for, like you said, TJ, wide board, push damage, set up that kill command opportunity. But TJ. This missile launcher. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, I'm having a I'm having a climatic experience right now. The only Oh, we are ready for liftoff. The only problem with this play is that you can't push the nine damage to base. That's the only problem. Double master's call. The amount of card draw in the Hunter's hand is actually kind of ridiculous. He can f fill up his hand completely. Yeah. Assuming there's enough beasts to draw. Actually, I don't even think he has that many beasts he can draw with the Master's Call. So it ends up being a, a very awkward draw. Mm. But it does mean his kill command is more likely to hit spells. At that point, at that point, were you just tracking? All right, that's what I meant. Tracking is more okay. likely to hit spells. Right. More likely to hit kill commands. So Kill Command being 10, Hero Power dealing 2, or 4 over 2 turns, that's 14. Explosive Trap would get you to 16. And maybe she's trying to find a way to just like set up a 2 turn here. Yeah. Master Skull will pick up a Hyena, a Timberwolf. Deadly Shot. I mean, it does, well, it doesn't actually do anything. Baited Arrow is actually interesting, too. It's face damage. Because it is face damage, but it's very expensive face damage. It's very expensive face damage, but Stripe Crow is also slightly damaging himself in the process. And if you think about it, Amnesiac has like, would have had Kill Command, Explosive Trap, and Hero Powers over a couple turns. I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting. This Fisher Scale Hide is just kind of to force Stripe Crow to want to trade into it with the threat of Dire Frenzy. Does he even want to, though? Looks like Stripe Crow just wants to go face with the big minion. Yeah. Hitting he, face sets up for a two-turn lethal. The Wait. true silver champion, though, if he attacks face, does actually set up a two-turn lethal. Yeah. I think it might even, if he draws any magnetic, it sets up for a two-turn lethal regardless. Because the uh, missile launcher will also deal an extra damage and then deal an extra damage on the next turn. So he'd be at, he would have been at, like, deadly uh, shot. At 17. I mean, I think he absolutely wants a deadly shot in this position. A second Tundra Rhino. Amnesiac, by the way, did switch to his secondary deck with that Baited Arrow Tundra Rhino Vicious Scale Hide. Second mm -hmm. Vicious Scale Hide. Mm -hmm. I think Amnesiac's secondary game plan might be to survive till Zul'jin. But he doesn't have Zul'jin, and he doesn't even have the guarantee of surviving two more turns. 
That would require him to use a defensive kill command, and he also knows that a spell has... Oh, wait. Mm. He knows. He knows that he has uh, Kangor's Endless Army. He saw a seven-costed missile launcher. Ah, oh, yeah. He should know 100% that it's in the hand. And he's actually trying to figure out a way out of this, and I think he's wrapping his brain around the possibility that maybe he can't. I think the way out is face damage. I mean, it is, but does, does he have enough to rack up the face damage before then? And also, any minion that he plays has Rush. He's setting up a defensive explosive trap because that's all he can afford to do right now. He's hoping again that he survives till Zul'jin. Shrife goes like, okay, well, I pretty much know that this is explosive trap, but oh, he picks up a, he picks up a Noyo module. Well, I mean, I think it's even better to just attack in here, let it die, and then Kangor's in this army to bring it back. I mean, he has lethal. Oh, yeah, you're right. He <laughs> if he just attaches... Well, he doesn't, know, he doesn't know what the trap is. Right. Because this play seems really weird if it is explosive trap, because it's so obviously explosive <laughs> trap. So Strife Crow has to know. It's like he's obviously setting up for explosive trap, so maybe it's something else. And if it's freezing trap and he goes all in... Aww... Oh. I mean, yeah, I know what you mean. He's, he plays the Endless Army here. He's still... So, yes, while it is lethal, like, you never expect the Amnesiac to just, in a magnetic deck, <laughs> like, any minion added on to that, 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 that Robosaur. Oh, man. Mech kind of, Paladin is pretty sick sometimes. Yeah, kind of a funny interaction there, though. And they both smiled after Amnesiac made that play. And Mijak's like, all right, you got me. You got but, me. But uh, he knew that was coming. Strive Grow 2-0. TJ, your fantasy, your fantasy team is uh, made quick to come back today. Uh, Strive Grow was an early pick of mine. I had faith from him from the get-go. Yeah. Um, and uh, Mech Paladin, I did not have faith in from the get-go, especially after yesterday's performance. But at least against Hunter. Hunter just struggles to deal with it. Even with deadly shots, it's like you deadly shot and then what? It, you you have to put early pressure on, and you have to r race. Right. That's the only way it feels like that that deck could win. Right. There's some you know different scenarios. The the Mech Paladin can beat itself. It does have a lot of spells. Like maybe your hand is clogged up with Glowstone Technicians, Call to Adventures, uh, Prismatic Lenses. You don't get early mix to Snowball, and since you don't have removal yourself, then the Hunter Snowballs. Like if right. you miss one drop. Or if you miss uh, developing a mech on turns one and two, and the hunter develops just like spring paw scavenging hyena, it's like, well, I guess I'm dead. Uh, so that's when, you, that's when you pray for the Christology and skater bot comebacks. Yes, I've seen it happen, but it's very difficult. It's very difficult, and I mean, I guess Strifecore had consecration maybe in his secondary, but I don't even think he switched. I think he just went straight for his primary. Uh, straight for his primary. Yeah, we saw the Tyrion. So straight for his primary is like, I'm just gonna get get on board early, snowball, and kill you too well. All right, well, let's go ahead and talk to Strife Crow, who's on the line. What's up, Kanye there? Hello, how's it going? It's going all right, man. So 2-0 with the Paladin over Hunter. Was it, uh, in your testing, did you feel like Paladin was very good against the Hunter? Yeah, um, I actually didn't get to test the deck, like, a lot before submitting it. It was, like, a last-minute uh, decision. I just submitted the deck maybe 20 minutes before the deadline. I actually submitted a Rogue, and I resubmitted the Paladin over the deck. Um, I I got a lot of testing done this morning against the Hunter. Uh, I think Paladin is favored, just like the stats say. Uh, I brought the deck because I thought it was good against uh, Hunter, Warrior, and Rogue. Um, got one of the mage matchups this week, which is awful, but... Uh, uh, yeah, the only way Hunter wins is if they snowball a scavenging hyena. It's like literally the only way, I believe. But it's it's semi consistent that they can do it. But if that's like their entire equity. Gotcha. Uh, so we're, you brought this Paladin deck, and you said you changed your mind at the last minute. Was that because uh, you found inspiration for the Paladin, or were you trying to uh, target certain opponents this week? Uh, I actually had my plan before I switched. Um, at the last second, I started playing some Europe Ladder, and I started running into a couple of Mech Paladins. I'm like, whoa, this deck is OP, you know? Uh, <laughs> then I checked out. <laughs> then I checked out the stats on HS3 play, and it actually had really good stats on the, the important matchups that I thought um, for this week. So I decided to switch. In hindsight, it wasn't a, it wasn't a great decision. But that's being pretty, like, results-oriented based on, you know, the decks I fought. So I'm not sure yet, yeah. Okay, so you're still like on the fence on whether or not you uh, regret bringing it, or you still think it's a good pick. 
I think it's maybe a good deck, but it's not really uh, good against Mage in particular. It's really bad against Mage, so. Yeah, it feels like uh, there's not enough tech cards <laughs> trying to answer Mage if you yeah. have that. Plus, uh, Mage has all those good tools, like a Ray of Frost, and it's like, oh, I guess uh, I can't do anything yeah. the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of how I felt. You, you, you really need to like taunt them out, but it's, it's so yeah. hard. They can even just create a huge board and conjure if, your taunt for lethal, you know, so. Gotcha. Um, well, I mean, it's still cool that you were the one bringing Paladin this week. I think a lot of people weren't expecting it to. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I mean, being unpredictable, as we can see week to week, is starting to make opponents sweat a little bit when they're preparing. Um, I do want to ask, uh, are, are you considering that a lot, or are you just trying to stick more to what you think is good, uh, what you feel comfortable with deck-wise? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Uh, I, I'm looking at opponents' stuff, and I'm trying to mix it up a little bit myself. So I want to make it harder for people to play against me as well during their weeks. So. Gotcha. Makes sense. Uh, Strike, are you joining us at Vegas next week? Yeah, I'm about to. I'm flying out Thursday. This Thursday, I'll be heading to Vegas. I haven't played one of these like big open lands for a while. It'd be, it should be cool. Um, my teammate Impact is going as well. We've been uh, pre preparing for that a little bit. We'll have to see how it goes because uh, I haven't played an open tournament in a while. So, yeah, it'll be nice. And uh, Vegas is definitely a really fun place. I know we're all going to have a lot of fun there. TJ, any quest last questions here for a before we let them go? Uh, yeah, I actually have a two part question. Okay. Uh, okay. Strifeco, rate Glowstone Technician <laughs> on a scale of one to ten. Uh, you know, it's pretty good now. If you look at if you look at yes! the stats it gives, it's like it's like seven out of ten for me or eight seven out, out of 10. ten. It's like a five mana. 13, 14, bomb. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Um, and second question, uh, what diff or what uh, differences would the deck have if you had, like, extra time uh, to submit? Like, what, after playing a weekend of this deck in Grandmasters, would you change? Honestly, I don't even know yet. I've been partying pretty hard this weekend. I was hangover <laughs> right now. Um, I've been, like, the other weeks I, I was actually doing very, like, serious things, you know, but I had to give myself a break this weekend. Um, I, I don't know. I didn't test anything. <laughs> Well, one one's a pretty good result given that response. So well, he's pre yeah. he's pre gaming for Vegas <laughs> next week. You still got a yeah. week. All yeah. right, man. All right, all right, dude. Uh, we'll take a much deserved rest until next weekend. We'll see you there, and congrats on the victory against Amnesiac. Thank you. All right, uh, seven out of ten, Dan. Not bad. Look, if you can rate a mech pound to seven out of ten right now, I think that's definitely on well, the higher end. Well, specifically glowstone technician. It's great. It's a great card. Yeah. He said it was pretty good. The, the words not, of the other player I'm saying not it's the worst you. card in the deck. I'm not arguing with you. I would have given it like a 5 out of 10. Okay. Maybe a 5.5. I would have given it a 3 out of 4. Okay. Slightly better than Strife Girls rating. Well, it's, it's the stat line. It's a 5 mana 3 4. Ah, okay. Yeah. You missed the joke there. It's okay. Uh, going into the fifth match for today, DJ. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. Coming up next, we have Purple versus Race. It's going to be the first of two Mage versus Warriors. So uh, don't go anywhere. More Hearthstone Grandmasters action continues right after this.